Hi, this is going to be a angel reading for the sign of Taurus. Hi, Taurus. All right. I have my tea. I have my Lemurian quartz crystal. I have my water. And I have my, doo -doo -doo -doo, my cock cup. For those of you that know, you know. <laughs> Let's dive right in, okay? All right. I think we will start with the Dragon Tarot. And actually, let's start with the Light Seers and see if Spirit has any message for you. <coughs> and then we'll move on to your Akashic. So, for those of you that are new to my channel, welcome. Um, this reading is timeless, so whenever you find this reading, it's for you. If my voice sounds a little bit hoarse, I do have a little bit of a cough. So for those of you that know, my children have been sick with like this weird influenza type flu thing. And I was lucky enough not to catch it, except I do have a cough, which will not go away. I've had it for two days. All right, we're reading now for Taurus. What do our Tauruses need to know? Angels, connecting with Taurus's angel team. What do my beautiful Tauruses need to know? Taurus. Reading now for Taurus. For those of you that are former subscribers, welcome back. I'm going to be doing your angel reading first, Taurus, and then I'll be doing your love reading, and then I'll be doing your sexual energy read. Hopefully I can get them all done today. <coughs> There's going to be lots of coughing. Apologies. If you hear any background noise, just ignore it. My children are awake. My brother is watching them today. Okay. Woof. All right. What do we got for Taurus? Four cards for Taurus. So I told my friend that I was reading for Taurus. And, <laughs> and the first thing she says to me is, good luck riding Taurus. <laughs> I don't know if she thought I said, re <laughs> I said, I'm going to be reading for Taurus. And I don't know if she thought I said riding Taurus <laughs> or if she misheard or if she said it on purpose. But she responded back with, good luck riding Taurus. <laughs> and then she said, "Those they're very stubborn and strong. <laughs> and I just couldn't stop laughing about that. Mm, to ride a Taurus. <laughs> I'm sorry, Taurus. I apologize in advance for any overt sexuality in this reading, and it's not even your sexual reading. <laughs> we, got, we got King of Wands already. <laughs> so, in, in the sexual reads, King of Wands represents a man with a big wand. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> Woo, Taurus. I doubt your angels want me to tell you that you have a big one, but we'll just. <laughs> I can't even function on the treaty right now. <laughs> I can't stop. Somebody stop me. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> I'm going to behave. I'm going to try to behave. I'm, I'm behaving. Seriously, we're serious. This is a serious reading. It's an angel reading. I can't stop giggling. All right. Ooh, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna pull four cards. Oh my God! King of Wands, Knight of Wands. What is going on with you, Taurus? There is a lot of fire energy here. Ooh. Taurus, Taurus. I do love me a Taurus man, though. Let me tell you. <laughs> King of Pentacles. Wow. That energy. Ooh. So I see you putting away lots of money for your future, Taurus. Good for you. Ooh. Divine Masculine Tauruses. Oh, no. Just when I thought we had great things on the horizon. Then we get a three of swords. 
Oh, I'm not sure what these energies mean. We might need to read them. I'm confused as to why a King of Wands would show up in an angel reading. That's the only thing. King of Wands, Knight of Wands. Now, the Knight of Wands is a very playful type energy. <coughs> so, it's like adventures and fun and um, being very excited about things in your future. And I do see that you're putting away money for the future. You know, the King of Pentacles is a very, represents a very wealthy energy, okay? And, you know, it doesn't surprise me because most Tauruses are very good with money. You guys are, like, very good at, you know, your 401ks and your and your retirement plans and all of that. Your IRAs and, and just putting money away. Um, they, I read somewhere that the wealthiest sign in the Zodiac is Taurus. So it makes sense, right? Um, what I'm not understanding is why Three of Swords came up. Because Three of Swords represents heartbreak. And the King of Wands. Like, this, this just confuses me. I don't... I'm going to be honest. I don't really... I know it's fire sign energy it represents Aries. I don't really know what it means. So the main words for what is it, the hair or something here? I mean, uh, something in my hair. So the main the the keywords for the Knight of Wands is charisma, passion, spontaneity, pursuing your dreams. See, I told you, pursuing your dreams and yet saving money for the future. Fast energy, enthusiasm, courage. Taking inspired action. There it is. So you're taking inspired action. And right now, that inspired action for your angels is to store away money. I don't know, like a chipmunk. <laughs> like a money chipmunk. <laughs> Putting money in the money tree. <laughs> uh, the pursuit of adventure. So I have a feeling there's some kinds of adventure coming up for you, Taurus. And it's going to be different for all of you. But you know that you're going to need some money you're going to need to put some money away for a rainy day and it, this card also talks about like what what have you been dreaming about like what is it that you're trying to manifest and create <coughs> it's about being impulsive it says allow yourself the freedom to shift your reality to match your desires all right, so, and it literally says in italic bold letters, go with it. So that gut feeling that tells you to go reach out for something or someone or some dream, pursue something, pursue someone, go for it, Taurus. It is the right time right now. All right, and with the King of Wands, that also is about action, forward action. So we're going to read about that right now. An entrepreneurial spirit. So for some of you, it's about um, starting your own business. A natural born leader. Ideas that can be ultra successful. See, I told you. A creative visionary. Timelessness, success, and fire. So there is a lot of fire sign energy right here. So whatever it is that you've been playing around with or flirting with Taurus, it's time to go towards it for sure. It's... It said it represents a divine masculine. It says this fiery guy, he's a charismatic and natural born leader whose vitality, I told you he had a big wand, emanates through his laughter and his obsession with a life well lived. As you dance into this energy, you may feel a surge of entrepreneurial passion that pushes you to the edges of your epic success. Wow, it said this is the card of moguls, masterpieces, and soul inspiration. Wow, the king of wands calls you. It says soul and, masterpieces and soul inspiration. The king of wands calls you to unleash that offbeat weirdo that you've got inside. And be absolutely unapologetic in your pursuit of the stellar. Wow. It's all about passion. Invite others to see what you see. Wow. 
It says, Passion and Heartfield, we build this empire of light together. So it says, once all of these beautiful things start coming in for you, my Tauruses, be careful to remain humble. All right, I'm not sure about what this Three of Swords is about, so we'll pull a card on it. Why do we have the Three of Swords here for my beautiful Earth sign Taurus? I want to try to keep this reading under 20 minutes, if we can, 25 minutes. The sun. Oh, my God. Okay, so this energy of heartbreak it's it's a thing of the past because look at what we got when i asked why we had the three of swords here i pulled the sun card so whatever it is you're doing right now taurus if you're thinking about doing something and you haven't quite gotten up the nerve to do it this is your sign from your angels this is your green light okay now you know, for all the legal purposes and all that I have to say, remember to trust your intuition and to follow your own heart. But that's just for legal purposes. You should definitely listen to me <laughs> because I'm not going to steer you wrong. I am what is known as a truth teller. I don't sugarcoat shit in my readings. People that get readings from me will tell you. If I see your man is cheating, I will tell you. If I think he's cheating, I will tell you. If I think he has dog shit energy, I'm going to tell you. So, same thing if I think that your girl is loose <laughs> for you divine masculines. I'm going to let you know if she's stank. So, I read energy. I'm an energy reader. The energy is all beautiful and all signs are pointing to go. So, go. All right? This energy of heartbreak is in your past. You've healed it. You're ready. You're ready. You are ready for whatever comes next. Look at this card that comes that came next. It's the happiest card in the deck. It's the sun. It's Leo energy. All signs are go. You ready? Are you ready, Taurus? All right. Oof. You better be ready, Taurus. All right, I was going to do some Akashic. Let's do some. Let's do two Whispers of Love for Taurus. Whoa. I'm dropping cards. I'm drinking some uh, fifth chakra tea to try to get my throat. You know, I don't know what's going on. Damn throat chakra issues. Not telling people how I feel and all that shit. <laughs> exactly why you shouldn't hold feelings back you should just tell people how you feel whether you think they're a shithole or whether you're hopelessly in love with them let them know because if not then you get throat chakra issues such as coughs and sore throats and all that bullshit because the universe will let you know you ain't speaking up and you should be <coughs> see <laughs> I knew I should have just told that motherfucker how I felt <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say <laughs> <clears throat> but he's a stubborn Taurus. <laughs> Just kidding. I had to put that joke out there because I'm reading for Taurus. Treasure your loved ones. It is important to love others deeply. Wasn't I just saying that? So, if there's someone that you have deep feelings for, it's time to let them know. Treasure them because you never know what happens in life. Life is not promised to any of us. You know, no one knows when their time is up. So make the best of what you have. Embrace your emotions. Allow your feelings to surface and be accepted. See, I told you, Taurus. What are you not saying? Is there... This is the last one I'm taking. All right, so the first card we have is Treasure Your Loved Ones. It's number 10, which is number one is the card, or number one is the number of new beginnings and fresh starts. Zero is also a fresh start. It's zero points, right? Um, there is a woman on here with a small child, and there are two hands that are embracing them. There's also a beautiful planet here. It looks like planet Earth. It's in a dewdrop. So this is about allowing the emotions to flow. See how the earth is in water and it's sort of coming down. So, you know, it's about embracing, just like these hands are embracing, embracing those feelings as they come up, watering them and letting them grow, Taurus. 
<laughs> if there's someone you need to speak up to about how you feel. Now, this could be a new um, someone or this could be someone that you've never um, really told these feelings to. Maybe you wanted to and you just kept them held in. It's, it's the right time. We have embrace your emotions, which is number 18. Add it up and it's nine. It says embrace your emotions. Allow your feelings to surface and be accepted. See, I'm getting this energy of something that needs to be said that is not being said. So your angels are saying it's okay. You're safe. You, It is safe for you to express your emotions, Taurus. Okay. We have the only thing that is real is love. Shift your focus back to love. Again, we have the earth in this which is, you know, basically energy is Taurus energy because Taurus is an earth sign. So basically, I feel like the your whole purpose on this earth, which is most of our purpose, is to love. But in your world, especially Taurus, I feel like love is so important. It is like a major focus in your life. You need to be in love or feel loved in order to feel completely emotionally at peace. Does that make sense? So you're like one of those hopeless romantic energies and it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm probably one of the only fire signs in the world <laughs> that um, feels like that too. <laughs> I've always been called a hopeless romantic. I always wanted to wait for the one, the, you know, so I understand that energy. And sometimes it can be quite lonely because if you haven't found the one yet that you're sitting there, it seems like obsessing about the one or when is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? And sometimes that actually blocks it from coming in. But it says the only real, the only thing that is real is love. So they're asking you to shift your focus back to love. Shift it back. If you've been thinking about other things, about work, about this, about that, it's time to turn back to love. It's the right time. Let me see what else comes from this card. We got doves, which represent peace. So I feel like at this at this time, maybe you're at a time in your life when you feel at peace. And that's why your shift is sort of focusing to love. Because you're like, I'm at a good place in my life. There is um, a bunch of people on the side. Children. They're sort of hugging. It's this beautiful energy of like one consciousness. And there's a satellite and um, a astronaut. <laughs> so take that how it resonates. This might be like representative of the cosmos and of space or a cosmic connection that you have with someone. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Really good. She's riding a unicorn Pegasus. One second, Taurus. Whew, sorry about that, Taurus. Had to take a child break. <coughs> my, kid, my kids need something. <coughs> Oof, this cough. It ain't no joke. I'm very grateful, though, because, you know, everyone else, even the children's dad is sick. And he's, you know, sore throat, everything. Not me. I just have this little cough. My children, they had a fever, um, cough, sore throat. I didn't get any of those symptoms. I just got this little pesky cough. So I am super grateful that, you know. Okay. So I'm even high vibrational sick. <laughs> when I get sick, I'm just still a high vibrational sickness. <laughs> it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh. Before, like when I was like in a lower frequency, I feel like when I would get sick, I would be like bedridden. Like I couldn't get out of bed. Like it would be really, really bad. And now it's just, you know, kind of a more of an annoyance. This is um, number seven. So the only thing that is real is love. I think we were done with that one. Your angels want you to focus on love. It's time. <clears throat> All right. Um, I am going to tap into your Akashic Records now, Taurus, to let you know what you need to know and need to focus on. Um, and for those of you that say you cannot tap into someone's Akashic Record without their permission, 
um, technically there's a loophole and that loophole is if you're doing a reading for the collective, you absolutely can. <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. I know because I work with Akashic Records all the time and I do Akashic Records readings for people. And sometimes I will do like little things where I tap into the collective energy to just look at certain timelines from the past for um, Akashic Record readings so that I can see if I'm like, you know, accurate about certain things that I see in people's past timelines and, you know, so not to do my own horn, but I know what I'm doing, guys. I've been doing this for years. All right, Taurus. First card that flipped up is number 13, Forgiveness. So, forgiving yourself, forgiving... I was going to say forgiving someone else, but it feels like forgiving yourself. Just like you forgive other people, Taurus... You deserve the same extension to yourself. You are not a bad person. You are not. See? Release and let go. You are not your actions or what you have done in the past. Okay? Ah. <laughs> One more card for Taurus. When I show you the card that came out. Ooh, you guys get the same card that I get all the time in my Akashic reading. So I know exactly what this means. Okay. So you are not your actions. You deserve to extend yourself the same kindness that you extend to everyone else. And you deserve to forgive yourself, Taurus, for anything you feel like um, you have done that is bad. Because guilt will lower your frequency. And you don't want that. All right. And now if this is about forgiving someone else, um, people get confused. So forgiving someone does not mean that you're, you are um, okay in their actions or letting them get away with something. So say someone does something to you that you think is really terrible. It's not about, forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for you. And, you know, forgiving them means that you forgive them for hurting you. And then you release and let go. We literally have 13 forgiveness and then number 30, which is release and let go. These are both threes, okay? Well, if you add three and one, it's four. But you have a lot of threes here. So uh, you have a lot of ascended master numbers here because number 36 right here, it's 13, 30, and 36. If you double three, it's six. So six goes back to three, okay? Okay. It's, it's, it's an ascended master number, 333, three, three. okay? If you don't know what an ascended master number is, you can Google it and it'll help you with that. It's basically a code for an ascended master, okay? So here's the thing, Taurus. Forgiving someone else is, it, you can't make it up. It was just 2333 three, three on my camera. <laughs> okay, so there's ascended master um, energy here, Taurus. That will resonate with you if, if that's your energy or someone surrounding you. Um, so here's the thing, Taurus. Forgiving another person is not about them. It's about you. If you hold on to anger or bad feelings for someone, then you're just, you're just burning yourself. It's like, you know, I've heard someone say it's like holding on to a hot coal and throwing it at someone and expecting it to hurt them. <laughs> and really, you're holding on to that hot coal and it's burning you. And you might you might hit them with the coal and, and cause some damage. But in the long run, the only one that's really getting burned bad is you because you're holding on to it, right? So holding on to all this anger and hatred or feelings of resentment or hurt, you know, and in regards to not forgiving someone is just hurting you. And now let me just clear something up. So forgiving someone doesn't mean that you you even have, have to deal with them. You don't have to call them and say, hey, I forgive you. You don't even have to deal with them. 
You don't have to let them back in your life. You don't have to let a toxic person back in your life. So for example, you are in a relationship with someone. They are consistently toxic. Don't listen to your needs. They're not receptive. They don't communicate well. They're constantly um, cheating on you or there's infidelity. You absolutely do not have to let that person back in your life just because you forgive them. You can forgive them, not even tell them that you forgive them and know in your heart that you forgive them and you're ready to move on with your life, okay? And not even reach out to them. Just do it up here and in here. Keep your heart open so that good things can come to you. So that the next, you know, whatever that comes in is is what's meant for you, okay? Don't close your heart. Because that's what happens when we hold on to, you know, those toxic feelings. We close our hearts. And then, you know, nothing good can come in. Abundance can't. Love can't. Because you're like, oh, this person did this when I was in a relationship with them. And it doesn't matter because you forgive them for you. You open your heart. You keep your heart open. Keep expecting the best. And you let them go. And you don't have to tell them anything. And you don't have to let them back in your life. You just move on. Okay? You absolutely do not have to let toxic, toxic anyone, whether it's family, anything. Like people like to say, oh, they're family. You have to forgive them. You have to. No, you don't. <laughs> no, the fuck you don't. If there is someone in your family who's consistently hurting you, say your dad is, is always disrespectful to you, calls you names. You, you can absolutely forgive him and cut him out of your life and never speak to him again. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to, you know, let this person back in your life just because they're blood. There's no rule book that says that. Your mental health and your emotions and what you need to do for you is the most important thing. People get stuff twisted all the time. People are like, oh, you know, society teaches us, oh, you have to make sacrifices, you know, family is blood, blood is thick in the water. No, it's not. <laughs> your most important focus should be you and your self-love because you cannot truly be happy letting other people in your energy that are going to hurt you. And people that hurt your feelings or hurt you are not respectful enough to... If someone is disrespecting you consistently, then they do not have the capacity to care like you want them to. And they never will. I guarantee you. So what is your option? Stay there and let them be toxic and mean to you and hurt your feelings all of the time because they're family? No. Why should we do that? <laughs> it makes no sense, right? If you need to find inner peace, then you need to find that inner peace. And if that inner peace involves cutting out toxic people who are consistently not taking your feelings into consideration, then you need to do what is best for you. Okay, that's, I'm sorry, the angels have a long-winded message for you. All right, and speaking of which, the next card that we get is number two. It's angels. So, Whenever this card shows up, Taurus, this means you are an angelic being. Now, you might have a special connection to the sky, to um, to clouds. That um, very often represents angels. Like, you ever see pictures of angels or Cupid? They're always floating on little clouds, right? With these little wings, and that's how people portray them, right? And it's because um, of the... Mainly, it's because of the angelic aura. It's very pure and white, like a cloud. Clouds are usually white. So, um, this card, whenever it comes, whenever it comes up in an Akashic reading, it almost always means that you have had past lives as an angelic being. And now, some people argue and say, you know, we're all angelic beings, and we all were probably at one time. But for you. In particular, Taurus, your angelic life is, you're being asked to remember your angelic life right now for some reason or another. Okay, it's going to come up and you'll get different signs that you 
were an angelic being and it was probably your most important lifetime for you, okay? Or your most recent lifetime. Now you'll start to see things like feathers or, um, I don't know, I guess things that represent angels to you, angel wings. You know, this is an angel reading, so <laughs> if you're here, you know, that's probably why. You're gonna start seeing angel wings everywhere. Um, maybe angels, beings. Also, this card too, I wanted to let you know that the butterfly on here, butterflies um, often represent the soul. So it's something to do with your soul purpose as well. Okay, so last card we have is solar plexus chakra. Now, this is the chakra that is um, in the area where your digestive tract is, I believe. It's like your stomach area. Um, it's number 36. The angel card was number two. So it represents balance as well. Number two is balance. So 36 added up six and three is nine. Okay. Which represents abundance. Now there might be something that's blocking your abundance. This reading's already got way too long. So we're going to hurry it up and then we're going to go on to your grace reading. But nine represents abundance. Now there might be something that is in your solar plexus chakra that is blocking your abundance. So your angels want you to work on your solar plexus chakra. Now this is very simple. You can eat things that are yellow. For my favorite thing that I like to do for my solar plexus chakra is I like to drink lemon water. And I'll just slice a lemon, put it in my water, and I'll drink it. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll drink it. And that helps me to not only detox my body, but also to balance out that solar plexus chakra energy. But you can do it any way you want. You can go outside under the sun and get sun codes, which, you know, and sun codes are codes that will come down from the sun, in from the sun rays into your body, and they will literally, um, they will literally upgrade your DNA, okay? That is what I mean by sun codes, okay? That will also is the quickest way to balance your solar plexus chakra. But if it's cold where you are, like it's cold where I live in Michigan, um, you know, it's it, that's not always possible. Then wear things that are yellow, okay? Or eat lemons or whatever yellow fruit. Bananas, bananas will do it. Um you know, having yellow flowers around your house, things that are yellow around your house that will also balance your solar chakra plexus or even um, meditating on the color yellow and imagine it radiating out from your tummy, okay? That's going to balance out your solar plexus chakra and also it's going to call in your abundance. We're going to do one last card for your angel reading and then we're going to wrap it up. We're already at 33 minutes way longer than I wanted it to be um so I'm gonna go through my little sphere um oh, I just went into two files I thought I was gonna keep it under one file it's so annoying anyways <coughs> excuse me um please if you want to book a reading with me click in the description box there's a little arrow on the right or left depending on where you're looking and you hit the little arrow and it'll pop up my description box got all of my prices it was just 33.33 on my camera. Last card for Taurus, please. Check out my son's channel. He works hard to grow his channel. And I appreciate you guys following him. He goes by August the Vlogger. He's the only <coughs> channel that's linked below as a featured channel on my channel. Please check out my Etsy shop. My Lemurian Love Deck is on sale right now. So if you love mermaids, it's half off. It was $60. It's on sale for $30 because so many people have asked for it and it's I favorited it in my shop. And they really, it sells out very quickly. So um, I put it on sale so that people, I have this website on, so that people can have access to it. Because I want to create a new deck, so I want to try to get that deck out of my shop for now. So that is on sale. And I also have two tip jars now, so if you feel so guided to do that, I appreciate your support and your likes and your shares and your subscriptions. You guys are awesome. All right. Last card for Taurus, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Receive. Woo! 
When we open ourselves up to others, I told you it's about opening up and letting love in. We open ourselves up to the abundance of the universe. Time to open up that beautiful closed heart, Taurus. <coughs> I don't know why you would have it closed in the first place, but look at this beautiful energy. It's two divine feminines, and they are sharing a very beautiful, intimate moment together. Locked in friendship or in a lover's embrace. Either way, beautiful. So the universe is asking you to open up that heart and let that beautiful, loving energy flow. All right, Taurus, I love you so much. Bye. <coughs> I'm going to do your love reading right after this.